Hey everyone, PC Casual Gaming Dad here, and today I'm going to be watching this very highly anticipated MMORPG overview. Uh, this video I heard from this person, Lazy Peon. Uh, I saw it on Asmund Gold's channel, and this is supposed to be a really excellent overview of the game, and I'm very interested to see uh, where it goes. and. I mean, genuinely the most exciting upcoming MMORPG. That's that's something to be said. So let's uh, let's take a look and see what we have. With the recent news of Amazon's new world being delayed until 2021 and many hungry MMO fans being disappointed by this news, I decided that today I want to talk about the upcoming MMORPG that I personally believe to be the most promising. Ashes of Creation. Before we jump into it though, this video has no sponsor and took me a crazy amount of time to make, both with research, fact checking and editing. So if you'd like to support my work for free, this game has an affiliate program that everyone who makes an account has access to. My link to this can be found in the description below, and all signups to Ashes of Creation before September receive a small in-game statue for your house to commemorate our struggles through COVID-19. So for those of you that have never heard of the game before, what is Ashes of Creation? Ashes of Creation is a western-made sand park MMORPG that's focused on a strong mix of both PvP and PvE content. Sand park, this game was initially kickstarted three years ago, but was already fully funded to completion via private investment from the Thirty million dollars. Stephen Sharif. Unlike many of the Eastern MMOs that have had Western releases over the past few years, Ashes of Creation has consistently said from day one that there will be no pay to win in this game. Due to this, the game will operate with a no box cost subscription fee business model with a no pay to win, no box. Shop. The thing okay. that makes Ashes of Creation the MMORPG that I'm personally the most excited for is the sheer scope of the project. This game seems to be combining all the best aspects from all the top MMOs over the past 10 years and combining it into one game with all of that being tied together Looks beautiful. by the game's most unique feature, its node system. A node system. Throughout the world in Ashes of Creation, there's points of interest on the map called nodes. These nodes are basically areas that can progress to different stages of civilizational development as players kill monsters, quest, gather, and adventure within that node's area of influence. Starting out day one when the game first launches, the world will be pretty empty. But let's say you and a group of friends all decide to kill mobs and gather in a certain area. Over time, you'll be contributing XP to that area's node, and an expedition will appear with quests. As more players are drawn to that area, it will level up into an encampment with more quests, more NPCs, and more opportunities. Wow. After that, the node levels up into a village, town, city, and finally a giant sprawling metropolis with more opportunities. So a dynamic world that changes stage of development based That's on what very simple you do. Explanation of the Ashes of Creation node system, but on top of that, there's also a lot of variables within this system. For example, at launch there will be 103 different possible node locations, and the location of that node dictates the quests and world events triggered upon development. At this point you're probably thinking, well what happens when every node reaches its final stage? Wouldn't that become boring? Well, due to how the system's designed, this isn't possible. In leveling up one node, you lock out the possibility for adjacent nodes to grow to the same size. To change this and de-level a node so that adjacent nodes can progress, players will need to participate in a PvP node siege to destroy a city for example, so the town node near to it has room to grow and different content can then be unlocked. The way this system is designed intends for long-term player-driven replayability, where each server will have a different history of development and unlocked content. No two servers will be the same. Wow. PG, okay. A true ever changing world. When it a comes true, to the aesthetics, there will world. also be a lot of diversity here too, as the node will take on the architectural appearance of the race that contributed the most XP to its development. So wow. let's say a guild of orcs went to an area and contributed the most XP to a node, building it up to a town. You've then got a town with an orcish aesthetic. 
maybe a guild of dwarves wanted to explore an ode in the mountains, they could eventually have their own dwarven city in the mountains. The aesthetic of the node changes at every level of development based on the race that contributes the most XP to the node. On top of all this, each node in the world will be assigned one of four possible node types, with each having unique benefits. You've got divine, economic, militaristic and scientific node types. Advancing a scientific node over an economic node, for example, will give different building options for players to manage in the node, such as libraries, colleges and artisan buildings, whereas if they leveled up an economic node, they could build markets, stock exchanges and trade-focused buildings. Whoa. Each node upon hitting the village stage of a lot of, lot of depth, a lot of complexity. Node elections begin. In this place, you have to become the mayor of the node. As a mayor, you get to allocate resources, set the tax rate, and initiate quests to advance the node, as well as choose building projects contained wow. within that node. The way the mayoral election system is designed is different for each node type. For scientific nodes, it's a popularity contest where you vote another player in. For economic nodes, it goes to the highest bidder. For divine nodes, the player with the most node-related service quests completed will become the mayor, and militaristic node mayors will be decided via a last man standing battle royale type mini game where players interface through a champion rather than their own character. That's Obviously, pretty cool. Bad mayors will be a thing that exists in this game, so every month the election process will happen again so that other players have the chance to challenge for mayor. Monthly elections of okay. system, Ashes of Creation is also aiming to have a diverse range of content to appeal to pretty much every type of MMORPG player. Let's start with some of the PvP content that will be present in this game. PvP content in Ashes consists of open world flagging, caravan PvP, duels, battlegrounds, castle sieges, node sieges, arenas, and guild wars. But before all of you PvE players get scared off at the thought of open world PvP, you'll be happy to know that this game has anti-grief mechanics in the form of its corruption system. When it comes to corruption, players have three states. Green, non-combatant. Purple, combatant. Red, corrupted. I've displayed an image on screen that shows how this system works, but from mm. the point of view of a non-combatant PvE player minding their own business, if another player comes up to you and kills you, they will become corrupted and receive ever-growing penalties the more innocent players they decide to kill. Eventually, corrupted players can drop their items which can be looted by other players, they'll also lose more experience upon death, and also feel dampening in PvP so they become weaker. Corruption gained is also greater based on the level disparity, so a high level randomly killing a new low level player. Oh, that's interesting. I like that. Additionally, the game will have a bounty system where players with high corruption score will appear on the map for bounty hunters to track down and kill for a Okay, this let me just stop and say this is this is the kind I'm not a, I'm not a big PvP -er. I don't mind doing things like battlegrounds and sorts, but this is actually a world PvP that I can get on board with. What a very creative way and NPC of dealing with it. Also attack corrupted players on site, limiting their access to services within nodes. Wow. The caravan PvP system <laughs> matches is designed to bring risk versus reward gameplay. Due to storage being localized to each node and different areas of the map having easier or harder access to certain resources, players will need to transport goods between nodes via caravans. When a caravan is spawned, it will create a moving, open world PvP zone. When players approach the caravan, they will be given three options, attack, defend or ignore. <laughs> caravans can transport goods from more than one player at a time, and I can imagine this system alone will bring about the existence of mercenary guilds who attack caravans or defend them when paid by other players. Castle Sieges will be a monthly event in which guilds can fight in a 250 vs 250 battle to take control of one of the 500 people. in the world. Node Sieges are different to Castle Sieges and are the catalyst for change in the world. That's pretty massive. Node Sieges can last up to two hours. If a node is successfully defended, it can't be attacked for a certain period of time in relation to the level of that node. A okay. village, for example, can't be attacked for another 20 days, whilst a metropolis cannot be attacked 20, for 30, 40, 50 defense. days. Okay, so that makes it something to look forward to. You can't just, like, take in and you have to defend it right away. For, war. for a village siege, there's two days' notice, and for metropolis, there's five days' And there's, a, there's basically a cooldown on declaring sieges. Within ah. a certain period of the server's prime time to give everyone a chance to attend. If a node siege is successful, the node is reset to zero, 
and players with resources stored in that node will lose some of those resources and real space player housing will also ah, be destroyed. Ah, like real life consequences, Guild Wars huh? Another separate PvP system in Ashes of Creation which basically allows guilds to declare war on each other and Looks better than New World, I'll tell you, just visually it looks great. This system isn't fully fleshed out as of making this video, but it seems like a more in-depth version of what Black Desert Online currently has with objective-based components mixed into it too. Guilds can be at war against multiple other guilds at the same time, and guild wars operate outside of the game's corruption PvP flagging system. Okay. Like duels, battlegrounds, and arenas are fairly self-explanatory features that Ashes of Creation will have that we all like to see in MMOs, but overall, when it comes to the PvP content this game will have, it sounds like everything I've ever wanted in an MMO, from the risk versus reward of the caravan system, to node sieges being the catalyst for change in the world, to the prestige of your guild owning one of the five castles on the server. It seems like this game has PvP content for everyone from casual to hardcore and everything in between. I like that. I'm a casual player, so uh, I like that for sure. Play a massive role in Ashes of Creation and features content in the form of quests, open world dungeons, instanced dungeons, open world raids, instanced raids, world bosses and monster open, coin uh, events, wow. as well as all the activities related to the growth of nodes. PvE dungeon and raid content in Ashes will be designed for group sizes of 8, 16, 16 and 40, players. okay. This game will feature a mix of both different than dungeons and raids, the standard as well as instanced dungeons and raids, with 80% of them being open world and 20% of them being instanced. There will hmm. be no group finder in this game, so you'll need to join guilds and find party members via social interaction if you want to partake no in the PvE content. Hmm. The way open world dungeons and raids will work is that they increase in difficulty the deeper you venture inside. At the entrance you might be fighting weaker, lower level mobs with fewer mechanics, but as you get deeper into the dungeon you'll fight tougher enemies with more mechanics and better loot. Additionally, something you need to bear in mind is that all of the PvE content that's available in Ashes depends on the location of the nodes that the community decides. So sometimes to if you the server may have access Yeah, so that kid like he's about to say it actually right. Completely now. different yeah. raids and dungeons to another server. Yeah. Purely because That's really cool. Developed differently in That's very cool, honestly. So unlike other MMORPGs, the end game PvE non-linear progression. progression. It can't be Very cool. progression because different raids and dungeons will be locked or unlocked depending on where nodes are developed. Dang, and that dragon. Are. That's awesome. So in a way, it could also be in a PvE player's best interest to participate in a PvP node siege to reset the node that unlocks a certain raid so that another node can then be developed which unlocks a different raid. A fun, unique piece of PvE content that I think a lot of people will enjoy in Ashes is its monster coin system. This is an event that either spawns randomly or following the advancement of a node in which a horde of NPC monsters will spawn and attack the node. During this time players can use an item called a monster coin, which they can receive as a rare drop in game, to turn into a monster and assist the NPCs in attacking the node against other players. During a monster coin event the node can't be destroyed, but buildings, services and NPCs can be disabled for a period of time. Quests and Ashes of Creation are divided up into three categories, events, tasks and narrative quests. Events are things that happen in Ashes as a result of the development of the world. Successfully completing an event will have positive consequences such as buffs, and failing events will have negative consequences such as natural disasters or node wow. services being unavailable. Wow, so negative consequences too. Tasks are quests without excessive amounts of text and story around them such as collect X resources to help build a blacksmith for the node. And narrative quests are more traditional story quests that can be personal to your class, race or the region of the world you're in, with some of these story arcs being locked behind further development of the nodes. If I was a role player, Ashes of Creation is without a doubt the MMORPG I'd be looking forward to the most. This game's being designed with so many great RP features to really add that extra level of immersion. First, let's talk about the extensive player housing system. This game will have three types of player housing, instanced apartments, real space open world freeholds, and static housing within nodes. 
Each of these three types of player housing become available once a node reaches village stage or higher. Instance departments will become available in a node if a mayor decides to construct apartment buildings within an empty plot. These will work similar to the housing system in BDO, where you approach an apartment door and you've got a list of options for whose apartment you want to visit. Static housing within nodes are real space player housing that players can buy that will be visible to everyone. You'll be able to decorate the front of your house with yard ornaments, seamlessly enter and exit, and see your house grow from a small cottage to a mansion as the node levels up. Freeholds are large real space player housing plots that can be situated within the zone of influence of a node, but not actually inside the node. Think of static housing as buying a townhouse that grows in size over time with the node, but freeholds as owning a set size plot of land in the countryside. Okay. Freeholds are roughly half an acre in size and due to limited space in the world, players can only own one of these per account, whereas apartments and in node housing are limited to one per server. There's many buildings you'll be able to place on your freehold such as a blacksmith, stables and other stuff related to crafting, role playing and other life skill related content players might want to partake in. Each of these three forms of player housing will allow players to decorate them with furniture, some of which is functional, others just cosmetic, and when a node's destroyed players will lose their housing, however a template will be mailed to them so they can quickly load the layout of their housing hassle free when they eventually find a new home. As with every good roleplay MMO, Ashes of Creation will feature a wide range of races. Currently the game is planning on 9 playable races for launch, each of which have different cultures. Kalar, build, order, civilization. These are the foundational principles of the Kalar. The Empire and the Old World span the largest of all. They plan to do the same in this world. Extremely loyal to their roots. Okay, okay, so it's okay. Kalar, those are the humans, the Kalar and the Veilun. Trade, law, and hardship. We have the Pyrian Elves, Empyrean, Imperial Pride Culture. That is numerous, a force to be reckoned with, elite military forces. Pyri, Nature Balance Fury, come in balance in time, nature. Kavik Orcs, so two different, okay, okay. Human Elf, Orc Dwarf, and there's different types of each. I wonder if there's a reason that these colors signify, is this like, one side a faction versus different that's what i would assume i'd probably be a dwarf because i like the little people stoic tradition forge most of the people from the old world see a mountain and think nothing of it but the dunia saw a defensible home where, where riches abound oh i like that i like that for sure family freedom courage mountains is home saw it as a prison. How could they complete the great hunt inside a cave? The craft of their brothers. Da, 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 da. We progress you from the mountains. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, wow, I think that, this is pretty good. That's pretty good. It says nine, but I see eight. <laughs> which will be reflected in the appearance of nodes that they contribute to the most. You've got two different variations of humans, dwarves, elves, orcs, and a race called the Tolnar, which live underground. Different humans, dwarves... Okay, hold on. Let's just take a look visually really quick here. The Kalar and the Valen, the Dunir and the Nikua. I'm kind of leaning towards that, the traditional dwarf. Okay. Our Renkai and the Vak. Both look pretty cool. And Empyrean and Pirate. Wow, yeah, there's there's pretty much something there for everybody. Although I'd say, so the dwarves are the only little people. Or would it be some sort of a halfling? Um, that's just the Lord of the Rings side of me. Elves, orcs, and a race called I like hobbitses. Hobbitses. Different races will have different racial abilities, and each race will have different base stats. However, there will be no gender lock for any of the races, and every race can play as every class. Every race, the every class. Okay. The game will have cool. An extensive emote system with interactable furniture, 
the ability to lean against scenery, sit on benches and dance with other players. You'll be able to play parlor games with other players inside of taverns, some being dice games, others involving cards. You'll be able to join different types of social organizations in the it game. Looks really the it looks really good. I just visually looks good. I said that, but it looks good. Company, and they're also Wait, I want a pet bear. I want that. Special quests and I want that. I want that. I want that. I Overall, from a I want a pet there, it's a mount too. It seems as though there's going to be more than enough choices. Oh my gosh, look at those giant otters. That's that cool too. Journey in this game will be completely oh, they're unique. smiling, look at that. They also have <laughs> all the immersive social elements that can help bring people together in an MMO. Types of professional content. The professions of skills and ashes of creation are referred to as artisan classes. These are split into three different trades. Gathering, processing, and crafting. Gathering professions consist of fishing, herbalism, lumberjacking, mining, and animal taming. Processing professions oh, based taming. on refined raw materials. I like that. Use of certain freehold buildings, such as forges to process ore into bars, lumber yards processing logs to planks, and so on. Crafting professions consist of alchemy, armor smithing, blacksmithing, carpentry, okay, cooking, yeah. jewel crafting, scribing, ship building, siege weapon building, okay. and weapon smithing. In this game, each character will only be able to truly master one profession. You'll be unable to master multiple. You'll still be able to progress with multiple professions, but not to the extent of mastery. This is to create the need for community interaction and create Makes a sense, sense of identity. No jack of all trades. It's also being designed so that it won't become irrelevant like in other MMOs. Crafted gear will be on par with I wonder how fast the buildings go up. Do they actually go up like that quickly? And due to being limited to mastery of only one artisan class, guilds will have to organize multiple people to meet their crafting and gathering needs to initiate sieges, complete projects, sweet map. and contribute to the node. Personally, the profession I'm most excited for is animal husbandry, as you'll be able to breed different animals together to create some really weird and wonderful mounts. That's cool. Hey, yeah. The class system in Ashes of Creation is quite interesting and leads to a lot of variety. First, you'll start out by picking a primary class archetype okay. between bard, cleric, fighter, okay. mage, ranger, rogue, summoner, and tank. Eventually, as you progress with your primary okay. class, you'll get to choose a secondary class out of the same eight options I previously mentioned. So choosing to be a mage, then fighter, for example, would give you the overall class of battle mage. With oh, I want system, that. A I want that. Of 64 different class combinations. Let's just take a quick look. Okay. Okay, so bard, primary, and you can do the bard again. Okay. Okay, cleric, cleric, high priest, fighter, fighter, weapon master. So you can like really specialize hard into something, which I like. Or you can also be a little bit of each, like summoner and a cleric, necromancer. Cool. Very cool. Let's see if there's anything that like really stands out. Protector, shadow discipline, apostle, hunter. <laughs> Uh, dreadnought fighter tank yeah it's gonna be a big boy there okay mage arc wizard spell hunter ranger falcon okay rogue uh, predator rogue ranger summoner enchanter spell beast master okay we may have found a winner I like uh, animal summoning classes. Tank, Argent, Paladin, Knight, Spell. Very cool. Very, very cool. Which are displayed on screen. Very now. cool, man. Ashes of Creation will be designed around the Trinity system of tank, healer, and DPS. Mm -hmm. You will not be able to change your class's primary role. However, with some effort, you will be able to change your secondary role. Weapons and armor will not be class locked, but some classes will obviously be more efficient with certain types of armor and weapons. And when it comes to the game's combat system, it will use a tab target action combat hybrid system. The way this system will work is that each class will have two categories of skills, tab target skills and action combat style skills. Players can choose to have up to 75% of either tab targeting abilities or 75% action combat abilities, but not 100% either way. 
Okay, so you do need some skill. However, the action combat side of this combat system is still in development as of making this video, so it's hard to say how the complete system will actually feel. Like those elemental weapons of uh, the guns, so cool. You'll first make your character, choose your primary class. Choose a race, choose your class, gender. Hopefully there's a decent amount of customization, okay. Then you'll be given the choice to spawn at one of four divine gateways in the world. Each race does have their own starter zone and starter quests, but they won't be super mandatory to do, more of a recommendation. There's nothing stopping you as an elf spawning in the dwarven starting area to level with your friend. The freedom is good, nothing wrong with that. be truly massive, approximately 480 square kilometers in size, including both water and land content, as well as a diverse range of biomes, it's pretty massive. deserts, swamps, plains, forests, snowy mountains, tropical islands. There's a lot of footage on this game. It's pretty this good. Will be fully open world and also oh, yeah, we got a couple of people awesome. known as the Howdy. Ashes of Creation will feature an in-game viewable world map. However, starting out Fog of War. In a fog of war until wow. Been explored and uncovered. I haven't seen that in a while. Some zones in the world that will experience all four seasons, which will bring about their own events. Buffs, debuffs, and farming challenges. Makes sense. Seasons Makes sense. Will rotate once each week with a full four seasons. Ah, seasons a week. Okay. Season rotation passing by every four weeks. When it comes to the leveling, the max level will be 50, and it will take roughly 45 days of playing four to six hours per day for the average player to level. Okay, four to six. So let's just average it to five times five uh, times 45. We'll do 220. 225 hours. Okay, that's about. Is not what it takes to get to level 60 in World of Warcraft Classic, roughly. I mean, I haven't done it, but that's that's what I read, and I was just like, whoa, that's a lot. Okay. Level from 1 to 50. So definitely more on the hardcore side of things in that regard. Unlike a lot of modern MMOs, flying mounts will be extremely rare in Ashes of Creation. That's achievable only Legendary. for world leaders that own wow. the game's five castles, the mayor of Metropolis nodes, and through legendary limited time dragon eggs that players might obtain from a world boss. It's unlikely there will ever be more than 10 players per server with temporary wow. access to flying. Temporary access. That each server will have a population of between 8 to 10,000 players. Seeing them will be really epic. It's also worth wow. mentioning that fast travel <laughs> will be extremely limited in this game. Not that many people are going to get to fly. Okay, limited fast travel. Let me let me stop and comment on that really quick because that's really interesting. I think there's there's pros and cons, right? The pros would be that well, uh, you know, it's gonna feel like a real world because in real life you can't just hop on a flight and get halfway across the world in a few minutes, you know. So it's they really want this to feel like this. If you feel like you're in this big dynamic world so that's really interesting and the obvious cons will be some people like the convenience you know uh, i think that in certain types of games it makes more sense you know um and other games not as much so maybe they, that's just the vision they have for this game and I, I can be on board with that that will be possible is if a scientific node reaches the metropolis stage at this point players can construct a building that offers fast travel only to nodes within the metropolis's zone of influence. Okay. That's pretty much it for my basic explanation of what Ashes of Creation is without going super in depth on stuff. Next I want to talk about why I believe this is the most exciting upcoming MMORPG. And now he's going to give his opinion on it. Isn't just okay. a pipe dream, rather something many people including myself will be testing with no NDA before the end of this year. First of all, it goes without saying after everything I've just explained about the game, it will be the most ambitious fantasy MMORPG ever attempted. The I'm sure I wonder what Asmongold thought about this. Everyone. It's not just a PvP MMO or a PvE MMO, it's a genuine PvX MMO that has pretty much everything. Usually when a new MMORPG is announced and they talk about their plans when it comes to game design, it's always vague. There's a ton of question marks on many core systems, and it doesn't take long before players can look at the ideas of the developers and straight up say, this is a bad idea, this won't work. New World has been a perfect example of this since the first time I tried the game in 2018, to recently when it announced its delay. 
When it comes to the game design of Ashes of Creation, it seems to me that almost every aspect of the game has been cool. clearly thought out. And thanks to years of Q and A, where to find this video? Uh, sure, I can. Blueprint for how this game will actually play out. If you Here you go. The Ashes of Creation wiki. When it comes to the core game design systems, there's nothing I'm overly concerned. This is pretty good. I've no, I don't. I'm not familiar with this person. Well, I'm gonna give it a like. But uh, that's pretty cool. Pretty pretty thorough job, I'll say. What does their 75% action tab hybrid combat system actually play like? I think if they can nail that, okay, just sounds good. Yeah. Oh, and uh, thanks for the follow. Appreciate it. It will be a guaranteed success. Ashes of Creation is primarily a privately funded MMORPG made by an MMO fan frustrated by the direction of the genre, who was extremely successful in business earlier in life. Since I first covered this project in 2017, we've seen the studio he created expand to over a hundred developers, attracting people from Blizzard, Sony Online Entertainment, Daybreak Games, and more. This year, Dang, look at that dragon! Saw that earlier, but man, it looks awesome. Significantly, and in recent live streams, we've seen gameplay sessions of many core systems working, such as the mayoral system. Early hybrid combat. It's fine. I just heard about this recently, and th this video is nine months old. A forty-man raid, a caravan PVP system. Look, July eighteenth of last year. How did I not hear about this game? What's more impressive is the creative director's commitment to transparency, despite the project still likely being a solid two years from completion. Sometimes okay, so two years. People who have access to the game's alpha one test. That means maybe next year. To make content about the game with no NDA. And when you consider that Amazon's new oh. world still has a strict NDA, despite previously being two months in days are pretty typical. Release, to me shows a lot of confidence in a product. Now all of that's not to say that Ashes of Creation hasn't had its problems. Two months, yeah, right. <laughs> it's it's end of August, August 31st, the release of of for New World. Clips. The Battle Royale testing environment on Steam caused nothing but confusion to the people that were casually following the project. And in the past, the community went long periods of time without seeing any tangible gameplay due to an issue where large portions of foundation code had to be rewritten, essentially delaying the game by one year. But in 2020, we've really started to see Ashes of Creation come together. Almost every monthly live Ashes stream is game, there is. gameplay. We've already had players get into the early Alpha One client and talk oh, about really? experiences. Oh, that's and interesting. Over. I'm probably going to register on the site too myself. I'm, I'm very curious. I want to follow it. From extremely skeptical to cautious. So how did he get this? All this, this, uh, <laughs> this info. It's amazing. He said he said it took him uh, 35 hours to put this video together, and it's 26 minutes. So that's more than an hour per minute. RPG YouTuber. This is it looks beautiful. It really does. MMO that I've been able to look at and say to myself, if this game releases, it has a real chance of being the next truly successful MMORPG. Thanks for watching. Wow. I, I, I'd certainly say so. Is that why people are calling this the WoW Killer? Is, is that, that's what I saw? Uh. Oh, see, look, there, look there's Asmongold's video. It's an hour and ten minutes. <laughs> I maybe maybe some other time. As of course, scroll down, you'll find Facebook, Discord, everything. Okay, I'm gonna uh, you know I'm gonna click on that right now since you. Okay. Uh, register. Alpha one can access. So what is what does registering do for me? Like what what happens if I do that? Uh, well, I think I could do. Because you mentioned you did that, so what does it do? Does that just mean I'll get info if the game gets updated, like email or what? Okay. Yeah. Oh, you can. Okay, you can pre-order. Game time. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Uh, you'll create account and you'll see product price. Oh, okay. 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 All right. I mean, I'll I'll probably do that. Uh, and uh, do you mind me asking? Did you did you did you pre-order, or did you do you like do you feel like it's worth considering, worth looking into? I'll definitely register. I've been registered for some time, and all I got is updates. Okay. All right. Well, I mean, there's nothing wrong. I mean, I definitely want to 
keep an eye on this game now after seeing that video. It seems really interesting. You know, um, I'm always looking for for new games to play with my friends. You know, and this seems although this seems like the kind of game that if you have this, you probably don't need anything else. It's going to take like all your time, all you know, developing nodes and professions, building your cities, you know, getting freeholds and apartments and that, you know. Uh, did I try it? Uh, no, no. I, I, I don't... This, this video is literally everything I know about the game. Until now, I had no idea. I only heard about it. I heard about it because I saw a video on Asmongold's channel about New World, and then I saw that. Uh, Ashes of Creation, like that's kind of the comparison, the two the kind of the big ones coming. So uh, th this is new to me. This this looks way more developed, uh, at least more interesting than the New World does. Sadly, I didn't bother, but I might. I don't want to play with my nerves. Alpha is not thoughtful stuff. Beta is difficult story. Well, plan B. I'll be yeah. Uh, people are more excited for this one. Yeah, I, I agree for sure. And, you know, Toxic also. Uh, so I've only done one alpha before. Uh, it's a very different story. I, I've only done one alpha before. That was Baldur's Gate 3. And that's just because I absolutely love Larry and Studios. <laughs> uh, and, you know, I wanted to support them. And I know they're going to do a great job. And I played it for about 30 hours, and then I stopped now. Now I'm going to wait, because, yeah, beta is way further along in development cycle than an alpha. Alpha is typically very buggy and crashes and whatnot. So, you know, I, I agree. I, I, I'd ra Especially something of this scope, I'd rather just wait for something like beta. But I don't know if that means, like, that if you pre-order... Uh, it just says cosmetic game. I have to look more into. Does that does that guarantee you a beta spot? That's that's like the question that I have. I mean, so uh, I don't know. And and being able to play without, uh, yes, yeah, it did say monthly. It said so no box, no pay to win. There'll be a cosmetic shop, which is I think that's fine. That's acceptable, right? As long as you can still do your own things and whatnot. But uh, but yeah, it'll have a monthly sub. Yes, you're paid five hundred, four hundred, and playing nine months. Okay. Oh, you can, are those numbers accurate? That seems like a lot. <laughs> it's $15 a month. That's, it shouldn't add up to that. But um, I'm, look, I think that these kinds of games don't need, they, if, if it's a good game and it has regular content supported, a monthly sub with optional things like cosmetics, it's really all a game needs to be successful, you know. So we'll see. Uh, I'll, I'm gonna I'm gonna register here in a little bit, and uh, I'll take a look at some of those pre-orders. You know, uh, it looks like they're okay. Let me take a quick look here at their alpha update. Reevaluate NDA release. Okay, so this is what I saw on Asma Gold's channel, uh, but uh, they moved their start date to July and. The speculation definitely makes sense. It's probably because of the Burning Crusade. It's Burning Crusade's coming out June 1st. Blizzard, some people are even speculating that Blizzard might have tried messing with this game by releasing it that same time. I could see that, you know, honestly. Uh, that's kind of unfortunate, you know. Are you thinking of getting Alpha? Um, you know, Apple Bottom jeans, I'm not 100% sure yet, uh, to be honest. Uh, I... I'm very intrigued and interested. Uh, I don't know about alphas. I don't know if you can just pay to get into the alpha. I'm not really sure. Uh, but I know that I'm going to be busy here pretty soon with the Burning Crusade. I'm going to be playing that, so I'm not sure about an alpha. Some people cry about paying monthly, but what, what are you crying about? Like, you know, it just amazes me. I remember the first time I told my wife that I was paying $15 a month, you know, and she's, you're paying $15 a month. And so I asked her, how much are we paying for the cable TV for those few channels you want? How much are you paying? It was like 70 something dollars. How many hours do you watch? How much do you pay for going to a movie theater? You pay that much for one movie nowadays, right? You pay that and you get, what, two hours of entertainment, right? I know, I canceled my cable recently too. That was a big success for me. I was very happy with that. Uh, you, go, you, you, pay 50, you, you pay 13 to $15 for a movie for two hours. How many hours of entertainment do you think I'll get for $15 a month? Okay, for someone who's 
got a pretty busy life. I got a wife, I have two kids, I got work, right? Let's say I play on average, let's say two hours, maybe five, six days a week. Let's just say 10 hours. I'm getting 10 hours a week. That's 40 hours in a month of entertainment for $15. Give me a break. That's chump change. You know, I like, I don't know why people complain about that. If you don't have a sustainable income, like maybe like my son, he's 17, right? He doesn't have a job yet. Then I could understand that. That makes sense. But otherwise, there's no reason. It makes just, you know, you're paying, you're, you're getting what you're paying for. They're doing content. You know, they're, they're giving you content. They're, they're maintaining the game. They're maintaining servers, right? Your character. You just, people just have a different perspective. That's what they're doing, you know? Oh my gosh, yeah, movie. <laughs> Honestly, you know what's funny is the pandemic really changed my perspective on movies because we really, like, we we enjoyed going to see a movie every once in a while, but then we'd go to those theaters where, you know, they have food and whatnot too, and then for a family of four, you're easily clearing $100, right? Now, it's like, I can rent a movie for 3 to $6 at home and then just <laughs> pay there, like, Eurovision, how's it going? Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I got mixed feelings about that. You know, I think the pandemic really changed a lot of things. I'm, I'm not so sure how movie theaters are going to do moving forward. You know, uh, it's it's just really hard to say. You know, but it looks like here, just really quick, let's go back and look at the alpha. It says alpha one testers. Looks like they have an NDA uh, here. And then they're going to have a no NDA planned, uh, both uh, a weekend and then an actual period, it looks like for a full four weeks. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if T TV, <laughs> good for you, good for you. I just watched the internet. Yeah, you know, uh, you know what we do is we just have streaming services now. And to be honest, without boring you with my thoughts on streaming services, subscription-based models are really where success is at now moving forward so uh they're they're doing much better they just they really are so um i'm fine with that like i don't mind because guess what if there's not a lot on netflix i can just cancel it and i can always come back to it right so that's what's really nice about it i'm not locked into for one years two years you know cable tv they really need to step up if they're going to keep up with this i would consider buying tv only to put movie <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. I, I get it. I get it. It makes sense. Yeah, yeah. We, we have, so I replaced the TV that my wife was using in the, in the kitchen area with, with an iPad. And then we have another one we use for just, you know, travel purposes. And then we have one TV in the living room and then one upstairs that's not used for that. So really, we just watch streaming services and occasionally movies. But even that, like, I mean, like on Blu-ray player and whatnot, so we don't do a lot of that. Uh, let's see, uh, server deployment, performance testing, stress tests. Let's see if the, let's see if a game can actually get a stress test done properly because I'm expecting, you know, like when TBC, you know, World of Warcraft launches on June 1st, it's going to be insane. It's going to be so difficult to do anything or even to get on the same thing happened with classic. So it just amazes me how these people do these stress tests and then they're just not prepared for day of launch releases. Anyways, uh, okay, node features, okay, yes, definitely get to experience that. Player creation, hopefully they add a little bit more customization there, but it looked pretty good, I'll say. Uh, and, uh, and killer systems, oh, the caravans, the drop. The ca that caravan piece was really interesting to me because it looked like you saw someone in the video pay for a caravan to move materials from one node to the other and then <laughs> that you could get jumped or, and you have to hire people to protect you. It's, so you can make a living in the game being a mercenary, someone as who's attacking or defending. So I would probably be the defender, although I could see why some people the attacking would be fun, right? And that's, that's fine, more power to, you know. Okay, not a comprehensive list of being tested online, but it hits the primary points, yes, okay. Several of the uh, let me in the air side of caution. I, I, I guarantee you Burning Crusade June 1st is something to do with it. Uh, if you're considering buying Ashes Alpha, it would be a true test environment and not a game to play. Exactly. That's, that's what alphas are. That's, that, that, that's, that's what an alpha is. You have, 
when you go into an alpha, you have to understand what you're getting yourself into. And I've understood that that's why I have not tried an alpha other than this last year with uh, Baldur's Gate 3. And that's just because, again, just to emphasize, that's a company that I really believe in. I love their games. You know, Divinity, Original Sin 2 is one of my favorite games of recent memory. And it's a masterpiece, beautifully made game. So uh, I had a lot of faith in Larian, and that's why I decided to back them. So that's kind of just my way of supporting them. You know, like my brother, for example, he's got a Tesla Model S, and he got it back in 2018. And he got it because he wanted to be one of those early supporters of Tesla because he believed in them. So if you believe in something, I think it makes sense. It's good. Lots of people. I mean, somebody has to do it, right? There's people that need to test alphas. But I'm just, my game time is very limited. And I'd rather spend it playing and enjoying a finished product. That's just me personally. If you asked me this 10, 15 years ago when I was in my 20s, uh, the answer would be a little different maybe. Maybe I would have been more open-minded because I had more time. I just don't have the time right now. So for me, a beta would be much more ideal, you know, for, for someone like me. And I can see for, you know, someone like Toxic agrees that that's just what works for him. That's what works for, or, or works for you, I should say. So I don't know your gender or whatnot. Okay. So here it just looks like there's more explanations. Uh, okay, 39 days are going forward. All pre-orders, retroactive. Okay, so they're offering refunds. So it just it's just giving more of an explanation as to why they did the delay. Same, uh, waiting for beta, but watching your streamers with alphas. Sure, yeah, 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 yeah. So so that's that's a great way to do it, right? So if you don't necessarily want to do that yourself, you can just watch people who do, you know. Uh, and I think that's fine, you know. Like we have we have lots of people on YouTube and Twitch who who do take part in that. So they're able to, uh, to kind of just offer that for us. So uh, let's see, I'm gonna go to the shop really quick. Okay, Voyager's pre-order 500 Wayfair. Okay, uh, Alpha One. Let, let's, let's take a look really quick at what these entail. Okay, uh, oh, so I see the picture here. Our Wayfair is $75. Access to future future beta two test phase. Okay, so you so you can get a, a guaranteed beta test. Two months of game time, thirty dollar value. That's the fifteen dollars each month. Twenty five dollars in embers in game marketplace credits. No pay to win. Good. No pay to win. Steel wraith pauldron, accessory cosmetic skin. Okay. In addition, the time purchase you'll be entitled to purchase future monthly cosmetics as add ons. Okay. Uh, share your feedback and so okay. So seventy-five. So we get thirty dollars towards that. So it takes us down to forty-five. We have twenty-five dollars in embers. So I don't know if that translates to like one to one with the dollar. It's kind of what it sounds like. So that'd be fifty-five. So it takes us down to twenty. So basically, they're paying twenty dollars for this cosmetic skin and access to future. Okay, I think that's fair. You're giving them a little bit there. Uh, I'm also waiting for better cosmetic. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, this this looks pretty cool, I guess. But you know, maybe, it's, I mean, for certain classes, it looks like I'm wearing like a seashell of the, from the ocean on my shoulder. I, I'm not particularly. Okay, uh, fond of it. Let's see, two hundred fifty dollars. So let's see. What, okay, I see A and B. That looks like alpha and beta. Okay, so alpha two, beta one, beta two. So the beta one. Okay, hold on. Let me just take a quick look here. That's a fish head hat. That's what. <laughs> right here, the jellyfish hat. Uh, that's. Oh, I see. You're saying right there. Yeah, I, I kind of see that there too. Wait, why is this? Oh, shoot. Okay, hold on. I'll go back to that after. I just wanted to see how long. I forgot how long they said these planned beta tests are going to be for. If, if it was just that the alpha they planned. Six months of game time. Okay, so 90 bucks. $100 in embers. So the question is really is like, okay, if you 
really want to be a part of the, the beta or the alpha earlier. And I don't know how valuable these embers are going to be for people. So for me, I probably shy away unless I said, like, if I'm a big supporter of this game, this is a great way to support them, right? Alpha beta one, not announced yet. Oh, alpha two, yeah. Okay, so they've only got up through alpha one. That's that's kind of what it what I thought. I just couldn't remember because I just barely looked at it. Okay, okay. If you're a big supporter now, we, we got to come look at the big one, the big boy, right? This is Alpha 1. Holy smokes, that's a big investment right there. So it looks like you have full outfits. Is that a boat? A mount? A pet, maybe? Some transmog, I'm not sure what that is. Some gold, okay. Let's see. Alpha 1. Future Alpha 2, Beta 1, Beta 2, 11 months, almost a full year of game time. 115 embers. Okay, Geyser Glider, Pet, okay, it's Pet Cosmetic Skin, Mount Cosmetic Skin. Oh, so you can just have a mount and make it, so is it going to look exactly like this? Is it going to like transform it or is it going to be, I'm not sure, I don't, I don't know when, what they intend with a cosmetic skin for a mount. Nail of the Fathom Sword, cos yeah. Coral Corsal, Naval Cosmetic Skin, and Freehold Building. Co okay, so they're all, it's all cosmetic stuff. So that, that's that's fine, that's okay. I mean, people care a lot about how they look. They, they care a lot, right? So, you know, uh, I, I, don't, I don't blame them for going down that route. Like CPOE, for example, right? Path of Exile, that's where they make their money, you know? And that's that's fair. That's fine. Oh, I'm an idiot. <laughs> There's two more. I forgot about this one. Let's see if we know this one. Oh, so beta one and two. Ormonds fifty. Okay. Okay, I see where they're going with this. This is fine. If you, if you want to be a tester, then then sure. You know, like I said, if I just if I had more time, you know, just yeah, you know, I, I consider it. You know, I just I just don't. You know, my friends and I are going to be playing. World of Warcraft, you know, here pretty soon, and again, and uh, between TBC and then 9.1 that'll come out sometime in the next year or so, I'm exaggerating, of course, uh, you, know, um, you know, I just, and that my responsibilities, I don't have enough time, and plus, how am I, how am I going to do that and, you know, be able to uh, have streams like this every once in a while? <laughs> Although, you know, uh, my semester is ending pretty soon. So once I'm done submitting final grades for my courses next week, then I'll definitely have some more free time to stream during the day like I'm doing now. So hopefully I'll get to do more of that. Uh, okay, you know, honestly, this looks, uh, this looks really great. Uh, I'm going to definitely uh, register and uh yeah I'll, uh, so i'm probably going to register here after i'm done with the stream in a few minutes and just keep an eye on this game you know see how it goes you know we should use a referral code uh and name it okay oh name reserve okay that's true that's true referral code what, what, what do you mean exactly by referral code is there where, where do we get where do we get that do people have referral codes Oh, yeah, wait, he had one. That's right. That's right. You are right. Okay. Does he have it here? I forgot which part of the video he had it. Was it, it was earlier on in the, in the video. So let me, let me hear. Now, sorry, that was Leon Hart. My... Fact check program that everyone okay. who makes an account has access to. My link to this can be found in the description below. Okay, so he has a referral link. I thought I was looking for that. Where was it? Let's see. Let's look down. Tags. Ah, uh, no. Is this? Yes, this is it right here. This is it right here. Thank you for reminding me of that. I definitely would not have 
would not have remembered that. So, so thank you for reminding me. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna be doing that. And yeah, wow, like, uh, no pun intended there. This looks great, you know, and it's it's just, it's great to see companies that just are really passionate and care a lot about what they're doing and the players, you know, you have this person who's got this money, right? $30 million put into it himself and just really cares and just sick and tired of all the other nonsense and BS out there. And it's just wanted to, what class am I interested in so far? Oof, man, that's tough. But, uh, hold on. And all signups to Ashes of Creation before September receive oh, a I'll tell you, let's go take a look, quick look. To commemorate our struggles through COVID-19. So for those of you that have Are, heard, okay. reroll weapons and armor combat hybrid system. The way this system will work is that each class will have two okay, categories huh. of skills. Here it is. Tab target skills and class. No, not that. Creation Where was it? There's the list. With your Shoot. Rule class combinations, which Okay. So you have the your primary class, which you can't change. You pick that, you can't change it. And then you have your secondary class. So as far as primary classes go, uh, it just really depends. I'm, I'm usually pretty open-minded when I play with friends because I like to uh, fill a role that our group needs. Uh, if I'm playing by myself, it's a different story. Uh, I tend to go with a melee class if I'd be playing by myself. Otherwise, I'm definitely more open-minded to others. Bard, not really that interesting to me. Cleric, okay, I, I certainly can. And again, you know, when you pick your secondary, it changes uh, the type of cleric that you are. Uh, and but it's but check this out. It's interesting because like, look, if you go, so cleric summoner, so a like cleric. If you do cleric first and then you do a summoner second, it's a shaman. But if you do a summoner first and a cleric second, it's a necromancer. So it's really interesting how they offer those different combinations, right? Uh, tank, you know, I've done a tank in the past with certain, you know, like, like I said, if I'm playing like a single player game or whatnot, I don't mind that. But in, a, in an MMO, tank is a really stressful job. It's a stressful position. It's, it's arguably the hardest uh, role uh, some might say healers, but honestly, tank, you can't mess up. Like the healers, they don't always have to get it 100% right, but I feel like tank, there's less margin for error. So probably not a tank. Summoner, I'm definitely open-minded. I'd say necromancy sounds interesting, but beastmaster sounds really cool. I just, I love animals. So beastmaster sounds cool. Uh, a ranger could be interesting, uh, especially, hmm... Wow, look at that sentinel tank. So maybe a falconer as well. That seems similar to a beastmaster in a way, but you're a, well, you're also a range class. But see, summoner, ranger, ranger, summoner. So falconer versus beastmaster. Mage, maybe, but I, I say that yet I'm going to be a mage here in a, the Burning Crusade classic just because I've never played a mage. And wow, I just want to try something different. But, um... If anything, a battle mage, that sounds cool to me. Uh, fighter, you know, easy pick, uh, uh, you know, potentially a hunter, right? So you can give you a mixture of ranged and melee. That sounds really cool. Otherwise, yeah, a cleric, I think. A cleric fighter sounds really like a Templar, you know. I know I'll be a bard or some kind of support class. Yeah, that, that's cool. I mean, you, you know what? You got a good idea of what you want, like a support class. I, I don't mind playing support or melee and range DPS. That's fine with me, you know. And so many classes can be a mixture of both, right? So you can be a little bit of each, maybe some crowd control. So that's really cool. Uh, here's my friend's referral code if you also want to. Okay. Uh, I'm thinking fighter also like melee. Yeah. Melee, I think... You should pick whatever play style you enjoy picking. And I. it looks like with this game, with all the different choices, that I don't know about the balancing piece, but too often we pick based on like what's stronger, what's performing better. And 
the end of the day, you're playing a game to have fun. So you got to pick something you like playing, you know? Yeah. You know, I look, you know, my, my brother, you know, saying he's exactly the same way. He's not a big fan of melee in almost any game he plays. And that's just, that's just how it goes. Right. So range support CC, that's, that's great. You know, like whatever your play style is, you should go with that. Concerned how valuable melee will be in naval combat. Hmm. Well, that's definitely, well, that, that's a good point. Uh, I'd say that that's one facet of the game, though. So y you're not going to be, you're not going to be great at everything, right? Classic WoW is Enhanced Shaman the only way. Yeah. I've, I've played Enhanced uh, Shaman, but only in Legion. Uh, I did not, I have not played Classic. Uh, technically, I have, but not really. Uh, so... Uh, but but I, I do remember liking it. It was it was fun, you know. Um, just getting to do that, especially because in Legion you got to do, uh, you had to you get to wield Doombringer, which was awesome, awesome moment. It's Spain, yo yo yo. What's going on? What's going on? So yeah, you know, uh, I'm I'm pretty open minded. A different a cleric. You notice I have cleric fighter, right? Just so I could be a combination of either. Uh, you know, a fighter range. I, I like hybrids. I really do. You know, I just prefer versatility over like mastery. I don't know. I just like to be able to do multiple things, you know. So, hey, Alvon, you see your new, you see your new email? No. <laughs> well, what's the new email? What is it? Can you show us? What's the new email? I keep looking over. I'm looking over at the second monitor here with you guys on it. How do you feel about the artisan skills in map? Oh, okay, okay, okay. So that that's a very good question. I'm glad you asked that. That's 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 a little bit different. Uh, I actually feel like that makes a lot of sense because they want to make. Oh, is that the emo? Oh, very cool. Very cool. Okay, so uh, to answer your question, the artisan masteries make a lot of sense. They want to have diversity. They want people to be able to, maybe you can do specialize in multiple like gathering type skills, but as far as the creation or the crafting of things, it makes a lot of sense. Think about it. How many people in real life are really, really good or can master multiple skills? It's it, it's difficult, you know, you hire a contractor for a job, right? They're going to do some things better than others just because maybe they're more specialized in one thing or another. So it's, um, it's really hard to say, you know, what? Uh, I'm just thinking, I'm going to give this guy a sub here. I think that that video on his time is definitely, uh, definitely worthwhile and deserves the like and the sub for sure. I usually give likes. I'm, I'm not, I'm not super picky about giving likes. Like I just give it to people because I know it helps them. That's, easy free way to support them you know contract kind of gonna rip me up <laughs> yeah i can relate you know i had that uh happen with me not too long ago right uh with a well i'm not gonna bore you with the details but i understand you know and they for me it's not even it's like if they did a really good job like quality job I wouldn't be that salty about it, right? It's like, okay, money is money, right? You, you can still you can still work and you can still earn it. But when you pay and you don't get a great call, like you come and you have someone else look at it and they're like, mm, you know, they point out certain weaknesses and you're, it gets upsetting. So <laughs> I, I like it. I, you know, I, I like the, I like the, the principle of this game. I really like that they're, they want to make it, as accessible to as many people as possible. The class system, the races seem really, really great in scope. The idea, the theory behind it, the nodes is very unique. I haven't, I'm trying to think, I don't know if I've seen anything like that, really. I don't know if you guys have, but I haven't. So it's to me that really, and no two servers the same. I mean, these are some really, really great, uh, just characteristics of a game. Like, I, I can't remember the last time I've seen such creativity. Look, I'm not the most creative person, but I know there's lots of creative people out there. So for me, it's 
it's it's a really great thing it really is you know so i'm excited it's funny like you know i'm 38 years old and you know i just i get so excited about these things you know just <laughs> You know, because I love gaming. It's just fun. It's just fun for me. But but that's really what it's about. It's just fun. It's not a, it's not work or whatnot. It's just fun. Do you back this game? Did you back this game? No, I did not. Uh, so so I, I know you you just came on recently, but uh, no, I this video is today is my first time really learning about the game. Like I heard about it recently only only recently when I was looking at uh, you know a video on Asmongold's channel for New World. So I'm it's I'm very very new to this game. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, no, uh, I'm excited. Um, I'm looking forward to it and we'll see how it goes. Let's, let's hope they deliver. Right. You know, there's, I have to set my expectations. I gotta be, you know, I, I don't want to get too hyped. Right. But so far it looks, it looks pretty good. Yeah. Oh no. Thank you. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. Man. That's, that's great. Yeah. Been following for about a year. That's, that's great. Yeah. yeah. So, um, no, thank you. Yeah, I, I, I love being a part of these types of communities, you know, but I've been gaming since I was five years old. So I've been, uh, I've been gaming for a while. <laughs> I, I, I saved the princess at five from Mario Brothers. So, yeah, I set my expectations low for everything. It's hard to spot. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, my wife and son would get along with you saying that's, that's the same kind of perspective they have. Yeah. Sure, you know, I, I agree. It can be smart. You know, I, I try to be more realistic, try to be more grounded. I wouldn't say I said it really low, but I try to be grounded, you know. But I can confidently say that I'm I'm impressed with what I'm saying. Yeah, right. Yeah. I'm 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 impressed. You know, it's given how many games have disappointed, right? I, I don't buy into the hype, I don't feed into the hype. I don't, you know, I I refuse to do that, it's out of principle. But otherwise, it's pretty good, you know, yeah. Oh, if you have any questions or want to do deep factor graph stream. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. Fang, thank you. Thank you for that. You know, uh, I, I may take you up on that. All right, yeah. Uh, wait, oh, uh, sorry, Apple. I just missed the way you said it. Asmogol is going to join the create. Yeah, okay. That's right. That's, that's, that's right. You know, uh, he... So, so I saw his recent video, just a little bit. I didn't see the whole thing, just like the first two minutes of his video where he was, he kind of shared his disappointment about the delay of the alpha. So that's really why I heard about that, you know. Uh, want to become famous? <laughs> no, I don't really want to become famous, but thanks. Uh, uh, he's so deep in WoW. He'd lose 75% of it if he left WoW long-term. Uh, he might. I, I, so uh, what I'd say in Spain is that why does he need to leave it completely? I don't think he needs to. He doesn't need to leave it completely. It's look, he's been in the game for it's been such a huge part of his life, you know. And he's got lots of time. He can make room for both. I don't see why he can't. You know. Oh, you want me to ban? <laughs> well, if the person, if it's spam, then maybe I, I don't, I'm not gonna waste my time with that, but. But yeah, he complains about why every day. Yeah, I mean, he does. But I mean, do you but, but do you blame him? Really? Like, do you blame him? Like, look, I haven't been in the game as long as he has. I started in Legion. So he's gotten to see the game and what it's become over the years. And there, there's there's definitely some legitimacy to his complaints, you know. And, and yes, I agree, you know, I, so I didn't start watching Asma Golden too, not too, too long ago. I mean, I knew who he was. I knew he was famous. I knew he was big in the community, but, uh, and then, you know, I was in and out of battle for Azeroth and then Shadowlands, obviously I was, I was very excited about. And so I started kind of keeping an eye on him and then I just recently, like a few weeks ago, uh, subscribed to him and, and, you know, uh, I, I, I value his opinion because he's been in the community. He's a, he's a big voice there and he's been in it for a long time. So, I mean, he's got a lot of followers for a reason, you know. You quit in Legion? Really? Le oh my God. Legion was so good though. Like I start, oh my God. I loved Legion. It was so good. 
in the Nighthold raid too? It's like, <laughs> that was like my favorite raid. That raid was so good. Well, not my favorite. I liked, I really liked Emerald Nightmare and Trial of Valor actually, but Nighthold was great, you know. Well, look, look, I'm not gonna judge. It's, it's, I'm sure you had your reasons, yeah. Uh, his followers give him a bad name. He's actually smarter than you would think. I, I actually agree. I agree, Apple. You know, just from the little bit I've watched him, he is, he, he does, I think that uh, people clown on him a lot, but, you know, when, but he's, he can articulate himself pretty well. He can. Oh, you got bored? Yeah, you know, I mean, I think it would be strange for someone not to take breaks from WoW. I, I played Battle for Azeroth. I started in, right before Battle for Azeroth, a couple months before, I started in June. I played through November, five months. I got to 8.1 and I stopped. I didn't come back till like the end of 8.3. So I can, I can understand that. <laughs> I can, you know, sometimes you just get bored, right? You know? Uh, and I did have a period in Legion where I moved away too, but that first part, I was I was so invested in it. I really loved it a lot. But then my friends, you know, pulled back. So that's a lot of it too, right? Is if you play with friends, which I feel like when I don't play with friends, I can't really stick to these games as much. So, so when I played with friends, then I stick around a lot longer, you know. And I played a lot of games just like that in general. So, but um, you know, what, guys, uh, I think I'm gonna end the stream here. Uh, and I, I want to thank all of you for coming. Wow, I just, <laughs> I got several people following me. To, this, this is great. I'm, I'm so glad. Thanks for, thanks for joining me, guys. I hope to see you again. Um, uh, you know, I'll be, uh, I'll be streaming here a lot more starting next week. So, uh, yes, nice meeting you as well. And you know, I hope to see you guys here. Most of the guys usually play with Quid and Kata. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah. Well, well there you go. You know, I. Like I said, I find myself getting bored too, fine by myself. But um, but yeah, you know, stay tuned, guys. Come come join me again, you know. And thanks for thanks for chiming in and helping me with the. Uh, uh, I'm glad I caught something. Yeah, no, thanks. It's fine. Yeah. Uh, hold on. Let me take a look really quick. Apple, could you? Here's my. Okay, never mind. Never mind. I was looking for that referral code. That you left me. I think I'm gonna use that one instead, since you uh, gave me so much of your time here. I, it's it's uh, it's appreciated. Just well, not gave me. You just spent some time with me here, so I'll use your friend's referral code. And uh, thanks so much, guys. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I got. I got it. I scrolled up. I found it. Found it. But thanks, though. All right, guys. Take it easy. I'll see you. Uh... Oh, it's fan has one too. Well. I can only use one, right? Use apples. Okay, there you go. All right, I'll see you guys. I'll see you when I see you. Bye-bye.